Hello, everyone. I hope everybody is uh, staying safe these days. Uh, thanks for joining our virtual graduate admission workshop. My name is Jayan Cho. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics here at Texas A&M University. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, getting to know PIs and more importantly, their research in the context of graduate school application process. Uh, and I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but if we have any questions during my presentation, you can use the uh, chat function in this Zoom and then Justin and Nolan will try to answer that. Okay. For the last several years, I have served on our departmental graduate recruitment and admission committee. And working on that committee, I noticed that many students apply to graduate school without much information about the research by faculty in the department. In fact, finding out the research labs that you are interested in is one of the most important parts, not only when you prepare your application materials, but also when you have an interview, okay? It is also important when you decide which school you will join after receiving uh, an admission. So in this presentation, I will discuss more details of why it is important to know PI's research when you apply to a graduate school. Oops, let me go back. Okay, and hope this presentation will help you to find the best graduate program and research lab for you. All right. Let me briefly tell you the major topics of today. First, I will talk about why we want to know PI's research even before we submit our application. Many students think that they will try to find a research lab once they join the graduate school. However, I recommend that you start looking for interesting research labs before you apply. I will revisit this issue in next slide. If you look at the department website, any department website, website in any major research universities, there are many PIs, typically more than 20 or 30 faculty members in one department. So it is not trivial to find out a research lab that fits you well. So I will briefly tell you how to find research labs and PIs. Okay, if we find some labs doing interesting research, then you may consider contacting the PI of the lab. Then the question is, what is the uh, proper way to contact the PI? Or if I want to send an email for contact, what should I write in that email? I'm going to talk about that format and contents of that email too. Finally, I'm going to talk about what I have to expect after contacting the PI. Okay, these are the major uh, topics of today's presentation. Okay, let's start with the uh, why I want to know about PI's research before applying to a graduate school. There may be hundreds of PhD programs out there you may apply to, let's say, maybe 10 graduate schools or sometimes 20 graduate schools, but typically 10 graduate schools. Then the question is, how do you select that 10 uh, graduate schools? If we know what kinds of researches are available in each graduate school, then presumably it will help you to select the right one for you. So it is important to know the PIS research before you apply to graduate school. It also helps you to prepare your application materials and for interview. So I will talk about this more soon. And not only that, but let's suppose that you have multiple offers from several different uh, graduate schools. Great, right? Now you can use the information on PI's research when you decide which school you will join, okay? All right, 
Let me tell you more why it is important to know PI's research. First of all, let's think why we want to go to graduate school. This is a fundamental question, why we want to go to graduate school. There could be some different reasons, but practically doing a PhD means that doing research. Believe it or not, your life for the next five years or so will be centered around doing research. So for many graduate students, research lab is almost like their home. So it's important to find out good research lab. Second, when you apply to a PhD program, you will be asked for providing two or three names of PIs that you are interested in. This is because if we are invited for an interview, the admission committee in that school will try to arrange a meeting with, with that uh, PI. Obviously, the meeting is one of the most important parts in the interview process. For example, during the interview, I often have meeting with uh, students who indicated that they are interested in my lab. And some students don't tell me, uh, but the, when I ask why they are interested in my lab and my research, some students cannot tell why. So this kind of things makes very negative impression on you during the interview. So you don't want to choose random names from the faculty list. Third, you can apply to many graduate schools, as many as you want. However, you only join one specific graduate program. Then how would you choose that school or program? Well, I would consider joining the program where many interesting research is going on. Another question related to this topic is how I know if the professor that I'm interested in will have graduate students or not when I actually join the program. PIs might not accept students because he or she is very close to retirement or the PI has planned to leave the school for a sabbatical or the PI accepted too many students in previous years so he or she has no more uh, funding to support any more students, right? So because of these reasons, you may want to contact the PI of interest before making any critical decisions. Okay, then let's suppose that I decide to find some interesting research labs. Then question is the how I can find them. For that, I have to do my homework. Okay, the goal of my homework is to identify two or three uh, PIs whose research is interesting to me. It takes quite some time. You can do simple math. For example, if we apply to 10 graduate school and try to identify, let's say, three PIs in each graduate school, that means that you need to find 30 PIs. To find 30 research labs, you may need to search more than 100 different research labs to narrow down to uh, 30 uh, interesting uh, research labs. That's really a large number and it takes very long time. You cannot do this in a few days. It will take many weeks. Sometimes it will take maybe a few months. So maybe you think it's too much, however, you anyway need to provide those two or three names of PIs for each PhD program, right? So start it today. That's the only way you can finish that earlier, okay? Then how do I find PIs research? First, the department, try to uh, visit the department website. Usually the website has short description of individual faculties research and the link to their uh, lab websites. As an example, using the link, using this link shown in the screen, uh, you can find research information of biochemistry and biophysics department here at Texas A&M. Uh, I have to mention that the, we are now renovating this website and the new one will be dramatically different. 
So we will launch this new website in next few weeks. So please visit the website again to see lots of research opportunities available in our department. If you find an interesting lab, then it's time to know a little bit more about uh, the lab. For this, I recommend reading some recent research papers of the lab, especially the papers published in the last three years, three years. Those papers will tell you what the lab is doing these days. It will be difficult to understand the papers when you actually try to read it, but it's okay. It's difficult for, it's difficult to everybody. I also have difficulty reading papers published in other research labs. So it's okay. You don't have to understand everything in the paper. Nobody expects that you understand everything in the research papers at this point. Then try to read abstract of the papers. The abstract is a short summary of the entire uh, paper, so you can get a rough idea what the paper is about. Typically, this is the most time-consuming step, but there's no short there's no shortcut to bypass this, okay? When you do this search, I suggest that you make a table summarizing what you learned about the lab during this kind of uh, search. For example, uh, what is the main research topic of the lab? Or what is the major methodology of the lab? Why are you interested in this kind of research? It doesn't need to be a super detailed. Maybe a few sentences for each question would be enough. This kind of table will be very useful when you actually prepare your statement of purpose and when you have an interview. You can try to read it again quickly before going out for an interview. This will make your interview go quite smoothly. Okay. Okay, then let's suppose that the, I found an interesting lab after a very tedious, long uh, search. How do I contact the PI? First of all, let me be clear about this contacting PI concept. First of all, the contacting a PI is not a requirement, and it does not determine whether you will be accepted or not to that graduate program. In fact, graduate, uh, the admission committee decides who will be admitted to their research, uh, to their graduate program. So if we are not prepared for contacting PIs, then it's better not contacting them, okay? It's not a requirement. You have to have enough time to prepare for the contact. If you decide to contact the PI, typically email is the best way for the contacting but please do not contact too many people in one department. I will not contact more than two or three uh, PIs per department or per program. If you send out your email to entire faculty member in the department, then your email will be considered uh, as a spam mail or something like that. So it does not give you a good impression. The email does not need to be long. Everybody is busy. You are busy, I'm busy. And then PIs are busy too. They may spend time no more than five minutes to read your email. So it does not need to be long. If it is too long, then actually you discourage uh, the PIs to read your uh, the email. Maybe two or three paragraphs, or well, I will not use more than four paragraphs, okay? two to four paragraphs should be enough in the email. Okay, then the next question is, why, what, what should I write in that email? Here are some basic components of the email. I do not mean that this, has, this is the fixed uh, format. Okay, this is just an e uh, example or suggestion for you. So there, there are many variations in the format. First, you want to add brief introduction of yourself. Here, you may want to mention your academic background, 
like uh, what is your major in that university and the name of the university actually and which year you are in there something like that these are the uh, basic uh, information about yourself next you show your uh, interest in the pis research this is the uh, very important part here you want to be very specific PIs are receiving many emails every day from students. Simply saying that, oh, I'm interested in your research, is not quite effective. You want to say why. Why you are interested in his or her research with very specific reasons. For this, you need to read papers of the lab. Otherwise, it is not possible to describe why the lab is interesting to you personally. Right, so the you have to again. I'm emphasizing that you should have enough time to study the research which is going on in a specific of research labs before you contact the PI. You also want to describe your own research experience. Undergraduate research is very important factor that many actually many PIs pay attention to that part. So you can talk about what kind of research activities you participated and what kind of research skills that you learned, okay? Oops. Okay, next. You also want to, uh, well, in the email, I also ask if the PI has any plan to accept graduate students. Sometimes PIs, the PIs of interest, will not accept any students in the semester that you actually try to join a graduate program. I uh, gave you some examples why they cannot accept students in the earlier slide. So if we have uh, one or two interesting labs, but none of them actually has planned to accept graduate students when you join the program, then you may consider applying to other uh, university instead of that one, right? Okay, and here I show you some do's and don'ts when you uh, contact PIs. First, please don't use dear sir or madam or dear respected professor or to him to whom it may concern. Even worst case, something like a Mr. or Mrs. Please don't use these terms at all. This means that if you use these terms, then that means that you don't even know the name and gender of the professor you are contacting. It's a big mistake. Most department website nowadays uh, shows a picture of their faculty members. So it does not take much time to see the picture and then if your email starts with one of these things, then it will be considered a generic spam mail. Personally, I usually don't even try to read emails starting with like a dear sir or, or madam. Instead, you can just say clearly dear professor X, let's say dear professor Reinhardt or dear professor Wand or something like that. This is a proper and professional way. Next, when you show your research interest in the lab, as I said, please be specific. If you simply say, I'm interested in your research, PIs don't know whether your interest is real or not, right? Here I also want to emphasize that you should not copy and paste research description from faculty's website. Actually, many students use this strategy. They don't have enough time to read through the uh, paper, so they just copy and paste some sentences from research website of the PI and then put it in the email and then say that this is the uh, why I'm interested in your research. That's a very bad idea. PIs will recognize that immediately because they wrote that. If so, most likely your email will go to a trash can. Rather than this, generic statements, you can describe how you become interested in the PI's research and what you learned when you uh, read the PI's paper. 
here is an example sentence. So let me read this. I'm trying to read this part. I came across your paper published in, you put the uh, journal name, like the nature or science or whatever. After reading the paper, I became interested in your research on structure and dynamics of protein-protein interactions between hosts and viruses. I think that the research is important for the development of antiviral uh, therapeutics, something like this. This kind of description shows that you actually read the paper and how serious you are. If you don't seem to be serious, then PIs will not be either, okay? Next, please do not describe non-research related experience too much. I understand that you may have very interesting personal history or you might have a great uh, experience when you traveled Europe last summer, fine. However, those are not what professors want to know. Maybe one or two sentences might be fine, but uh, no more than that. In addition, you should not try to uh, oversell yourself. If you try to oversell yourself too much, then it can make you look uh, kind of arrogant or rude, okay? So that's not what you want. Instead, you can describe your specific research experience and research skills that you learned. You can also mention what results you obtained from that research. You can also mention that the, or you can describe how that research experience actually helped you to find out the PIS research lab. This is even better, okay? So in that way, you can personalize your own interest to that research uh, labs and then PI. So this is very effective. Next, please remember at this stage, you should not expect anything conclusive, okay? This, this kind of contact is not to determine anything. You don't have to make any commitment or promise. Simply speaking that PIs, well, simply speaking, PIs are not going to give you any uh, promise or definitive answer either, okay? So instead, you can simply ask whether he or she will accept students in the following semester or the next year whenever the, you try to join the, uh, the graduate school. Okay, uh, oh yes, and there's uh, another one that I want to add to this uh, list. When you contact faculty, if possible, use the, uh, your school email instead of something like a Gmail or Yahoo, okay? So when PIs get the email from the Gmail account or Yahoo account, they tend to delete that without reading it. So if the email is from some university, then uh, they try to read it at least, they try to uh, check it. So try to use uh, your school email if possible. Okay, let's suppose that I contacted PIs and then what kind of response should I uh, expect from them? So first of all, let's remember that PIs are very busy. Surprisingly, you, they may not look very busy to you at this point, but they actually they are very busy. So there's nothing wrong about getting no response from them. This is not bad at all. So I want to emphasize that even if you don't get any response from the PIs, don't be disappointed, okay? It's a very common thing, nothing wrong about it. Also, don't expect something like this. Your email was so great and then you look great, so I'm going to accept you immediately in my lab, blah, blah, blah. This thing will never ever happen. So don't expect something like this. This is unrealistic. Presumably, uh, most common responses will be something like this. They say, I have planned to accept a student so please contact me again if you are accepted by the department. Or I suggest that you apply to our graduate program. Or thanks for contacting me, but the, I have no plan uh, to accept students in the following semester. Something like this. These are very common responses. 
maybe the response, the email from the PI will have only two sentences or three sentences, something like that. But if you have any of these responses, I would consider that your contact worked very well. Okay. Okay. Then suppose that you contacted you contacted some PIs, but did not receive any response. Then what should you do? First, don't be disappointed. As I said, it's very common, and then there's nothing wrong about getting no response from the PIs at this point. You can try to contact program director or coordinator. If you email them, presumably they will try to contact the PI for you and then ask whether the PI will, have, uh, will accept students or not, something like that. For example, Justin and Nolan in our department would be the perfect points of contact if you are interested in some faculty member in our program. So you can send an email, something like this, to them and then they will try to uh, contact the PI and then we'll let you know the, uh, the response from the PIs, okay? Okay, finally, let's suppose that the, I got an offer. Then should I join the lab that I contacted? So this is the uh, very common question that I received from some students. So they contacted some PIs and then they got an offer, they joined the department, but somehow they changed their mind and then now they, are get, they get confused whether they have to still join the uh, lab or not, something like this. Well, in general, uh, you are not obligated to join the lab, even if you contact it, okay? And actually you will learn more about the PI as well as other PIs once you join the program. So everybody understands that you can change your mind, okay? Moreover, if you join the department, one of the departments in life sciences, like a biochemistry, biophysics, or some, let's say, biology department or something like that, then you are anyway required to do three to four lab rotations before joining a, a permanent lab. So, it takes about uh, one semester or two semesters for these lab rotations. And during that time, you have enough chance to know uh, people in the lab, and then you will learn more about the PIs and their research. So the, there's no reason to hurry. So take your time, okay? And of course, it's good to do research rotation in the PIs lab that you contacted. There's nothing wrong, and then it is good. During the rotation, you will have enough chance to think whether the lab is a good fit for you. Of course, you have to remind, you have to remember this. Of course, the PIs will also think whether you are a good fit for their lab or not. So this is a mutual, okay? You think about the PIs and joining their lab, and then PIs also think about you and then whether, the, whether you will be a good fit to their lab or not. So, this is mutual efforts, mutual approach. So uh, we have to think about that again. All right, I think the, that's it for today. And I hope you can find the best program for you. And if you have any questions regarding this topic, please contact me or Justin or Nolan, and we will try to get back to you uh, with some useful answers. And actually, any of you have any questions now? I think I still have one or two minutes. I'm not sure. I can definitely toss one your way. Um, so we have a question here. What should you do if your research interests are not common and you have trouble finding potential PIs who fit in that type of program? Well, that's a good question. Actually, the the first of all, you have to, my suggestion is you think about your research interest again, because oftentimes the student think about their research interest very naively and then say, oh, I cannot find out anyone uh, who is doing this kind of research. So 
uh, before you make decision that your own research interest is very unique, you have to be serious. You have to be. You have to search other. Uh, you have to search the uh, the faculty's research very seriously. When you sometimes, when you try to read and then find out PIs, you actually find that oh, okay, his or her research is more interesting to me than I used to think my research uh, interest is. So the uh, don't try to narrow down your research interest too narrowly at this point. So you are not even you you didn't even start any uh, journey in academic uh, the career. Okay, so this is the beginning. So there's no reason that you have to narrow down your research interest too narrowly at this point. So try to be open-minded and then try to think why the PI is trying to do that kind of research or not. I mean, that sometimes help you. Well, I understand that sometimes, yes, your own research interest is really unique. And then, well, let me say this way. So the doing a PhD is not the end of the uh, your training. Typically, after you finish your PhD, if you are interested in uh, academic career, then you have to do postdoc. So that's another three or five years, three to five years of uh, research training. So many people uh, change their uh, research topic when they go to uh, postdoc uh, training after finishing their PhD. Actually, myself was like that. So when I was a PhD student, I was doing, let's say, protein folding and then how the proteins fold up to make a three-dimensional structure or something like that. But when I decided to uh, do the postdoc training, I switched that to something different, like NMR spectroscopy. So that the, yes, I changed. And then actually many people change their uh, focus when they move on to next uh, career stage. So, uh, if you cannot find out your you know, the research lab that fits your current interest very well, then just be patient. You can try to find out something close to that and then try to find another one when you move to the uh, next uh, career. So no hurry again. So now you are studying very long journey. Maybe it will take 10 years. Okay. Other questions? I think that's about it. Okay, great, great. So the and then as I said, if you have any questions about our program, and then you can contact Nolan and Justin, and then they will be very, very helpful to uh, help you. Okay, then that's it for today. And then, bye.